just when you thought you were enjoying your brand new OnePlus 6, here comes the 6G. Like clockwork, OnePlus is bringing the T iteration of its flagship line, which once redefined the budget flagship category. How much has changed in these five months? What about the improvements? And more importantly, what about the compromises? I will tell you all of that in this review of OnePlus 60 coming up next on techpp.com. Hey guys, Raju here from TechPP and before we run down on all the important things about the OnePlus 60, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you get notified as soon as we have a new video. Let's get started. The general feel and build of the device seem broadly similar to the OnePlus 6, which when launched in May this year, was a drastic design rehaul from the OnePlus 5T. The all glass construction is bound to pick up smudges, but the front now comes with Corning's Gorilla Glass 6, which claims to be twice better than the Gorilla Glass 5 when it comes to drop resistance. No, we haven't tested that yet, but OnePlus continues to put a screen protector over it, possibly because of scratch resistance, which is still dicey on the Gorilla Glass. The big question is, does it look good? Hell yes, they seem to be launching with just one variant this time, the Mirror Black Edition. If there are more, we will mention them in the description below. But uh, OnePlus devices are beginning to lose that distinct look that defined them initially. Even the water drop notch isn't as distinct as it used to be. Yes, I mean, it looks premium, but uh, it can be mistaken for some other phone. Now coming to the section where OnePlus devices are generally good. Performance. The internals are largely the same as the OnePlus 6. Uh, we have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 running the show with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and uh, 128 or 256 gigs of storage. OnePlus has done away with the 64 gigs version for the 6G and the phone does its specs justice. It works super fast most of the time and although there has been an odd app crash, the general performance has been as good as it can on any Android flagship. That's one thing OnePlus has majorly improved in the last couple of years, software stability. These days, it seems a lot more polished and out-of-the-box experience isn't patchy as it used to be earlier. While the general performance is largely similar to the OnePlus 6, the 60 has a bumped-up battery inside. We now have 3700 image battery as against the 3300 on the OnePlus 6, and the difference is visible as well. We can comfortably see a day off with the 60. Having said that, I think the Honor Play and the Poco F1 still do better in that department. The big issue is does that additional battery life compensate for the loss of the audio jack? I mean, I'm not too sure. The change in battery life is significant but not dramatic. And to be honest, while battery life was not a highlight of the OnePlus 6, neither was it a deal breaker. Speaking personally, I would have preferred uh, if the company had retained the jack. The battery, as I said earlier, was not a deal breaker and anyway, the dash charge, oh wait, warp charge, sorry, fast charge ensured we could recharge it in a jiffy. While on the subject of audio jack, I got to test out the new OnePlus Type-C Bullets earphones and came out pretty impressed, uh, but then they are not bundled in and cost some more money. Alongside the audio jack, another thing which has gone missing on the 6G is the rare fingerprint scanner. But thankfully, it's not completely removed. But move to the front, we now have an under-display fingerprint scanner, which is a tad slower than the conventional ones. But unlike many other devices that I have tested in the past, I did not face too many rejections. A job well done, OnePlus. Also, the OnePlus 60 has one of the fastest face unlocks we have ever seen. So in a way, it makes up for the slower fingerprint unlocks. Coming to the camera, the setup is largely similar to the one we saw on the OnePlus 6 a 16 megapixel Sony IMX519 sensor paired with a 20 megapixel Sony IMX376K uh, on the rear and a 16 megapixel Sony IMX371 on the front are exactly same as the OnePlus 6. But OnePlus claims you have improved the camera algorithms for better face and scene recognition. Images do seem marginally sharper than what I saw on the OnePlus 6, but I could also see greater sense of saturation. Things just seem a whole lot brighter Interestingly, OnePlus 6G also has a night mode on it and it seems similar to the upcoming night sight on Google Pixel 3. While it improves the brightness of the scene, the noise levels are higher as well, maybe something to do with those oversaturated snaps. I'm relatively sure that OnePlus will address this with the update soon, 
uh, that's something the company has a great track record in. Now that we know about the device and its performance, where does the OnePlus 6T fit in? It's surely an iterative upgrade, but manages to build on the good things of OnePlus 6. I mean, to a large extent that is. As with every new edition of uh, OnePlus 6, the price has been bumped up a little. OnePlus might argue that they are giving higher storage in the base version, but I think the OnePlus 60 is just beginning to get out of the zone when it was the only alternative for those who wanted premium specs with a device that looked premium at a less than premium price. It is moving from the neighborhood of Asus, Honor and Xiaomi to the one where the likes of LG Vivo and Oppo Hangout and even older Samsung and Apple devices come into play. It's a brave new world and unlike in the past when it was seen as the leading option, OnePlus is now in a zone where it is dealing with well-established brands and some former champions. I wonder if OnePlus will be able to settle there even though it swears by never settling. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below and until the next time, may the tech be with you.